Hello, you're welcome to uh, African World Bait on uh, Lassan Wedrego. How are you doing? Not too bad. Okay. And thank you for having me. All right. Uh, Lassan uh, is from Burkina Faso in West Africa, and he's one of the leaders uh, in the African community in Ireland. Lassan, uh, you're welcome to uh, our show. Uh, can you tell our viewers a, a bit about your story? Uh, like you said, my name is Lassan Wedrago. I'm originally from Burkina Faso, which is uh, in West Africa, uh, which about uh, Ghana, which is uh, well known. And um, it used to be called uh, Upper Volta in the French colony, uh, but name uh, was um, changed during the revolution in, in 1984 to Burkina Faso, the name like Upper Volta, the name of um, the country of Mano country. Okay, you know, uh, Lassan, many people don't know about uh, your country. And uh, for the sake of clarity, can you uh, tell our uh, viewers a bit more about your country? Yeah, um, the, let me say an anecdote of my country. is uh, When I arrived in Ireland in 2007, meeting a university officer who was meant to you know, be aware of you know, countries in Africa or on the world, who told me that uh, my country was not, uh, did not exist. Oh, they told and you your country does not exist. Even using the map to show uh, where really uh, where Burkina Faso was, I was told that no, uh, they never seen anybody from that country in Ireland, and it's been that because I was, I'm a French-speaking person, the only country they knew was uh, Africa. So I was made as a Ivorian, and by default. Well, oh, you changed. Uh, they changed your identity. They changed my identity. They changed my nationality. Okay. Even though that I was giving them uh, Burkina Faso uh, contacts and address and so on, I was met by uh, an immigration officer who didn't believe that uh, that country exists, and I came from that country. But over the years, you've clarified. Over the years, I had to you know, submit like uh, tens of documents, different uh, ID, professional cards, and so on, birth certificates, and many documents to prove that I'm from uh, Burkina Faso. Uh, like you, you said, to give a clarification um, about Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso used to be called Upper Volta, like I said, um, since 1960s when we got our independence. And then uh, we had a different regime, like government, uh, through 1960s to 1980s. And we had a revolution, which we uh, believed through the government at that time that we needed. Is it the Sankara revolution? Exactly. Uh, Thomas Sankara, who, was, uh, who is our hero at this time, I'm talking to you, and across many countries in Africa and in the world, and is, is the one who came up with the name Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso is the mixture of uh, two uh, local languages. Burkina means um, uh, father uh, land, and, and Faso is like um, is in another language to mean the same, and Burkina and its word mean integrity. Land of integrity. Land of integrity. Okay. Okay. That's that's, that's how that's how um, we can define it as uh, the naming of Burkina Faso. Interesting. But are uh, Burkina uh, do they have integrity? Considering the fact that. Uh, uh, Thomas Sankara was murdered, and the, the, his deputy is being alleged to have murdered him, and he's still in power up to this day, and no one talks about it. Uh, What's wrong with uh, Burkina There's nothing wrong with uh, Burkina themselves, but there's a bit uh, disappointing view, on, which is a personal view, and, and the international community, because since Thomas Sankara killed him, we have stood up and campaign for justice and we've been we're still calling for justice of his killing and there are many many uh, networks and organizations around the world campaigning for justice of his killing and um, actually there is even a foundation of Thomas Sankara that was launched for that purpose in Burkina and especially in, in France which uh, connect with all Sankara movement around the world and we do have you know, petition, you know, campaign, uh, events, um, 
on more, many countries across the world to seek for justice, to call for the international community to do something about that. But unfortunately, it's the international community that is backing up the current president, which is well known that he, uh, everybody knows how he came to the power, and he's been there for over 26 years. And we can see recently what is going on back home where in Burkina, where he's trying to change, as usual, the constitution at this time there's an election coming. Yeah. To be able to maintain. Is he himself. planning to run again for um, office? We were quietly shocked recently with a uh, um, French uh, TV station when we did a, a, an interview to him, and he was quiet, you know, uh, ambitious of remaining in power through this uh, interview, and that was a bit shocking because he was implementing the Senate recently, which we knew that he want to use the Senate to modify the constitution. And stay in power, and he played a game to calm things down, and he put a committee work on that uh, Senate um, constitution. And unfortunately, it's last week when he was in France, he said it publicly through the French TV uh, interview, and he told it like he, put, he said it openly, like he has the intention to remain in power. By saying that it's the Burkina Faso people who want him to be to, to remain in power, which is completely false. False, and we can see right now student unions movement demonstrating, demonstrating, and people being locked up, beaten in prison. You know, it's a completely human right. Yeah, violation. that comes. Uh, uh, sorry to cut you short. Uh, to my next uh, question to you, uh, seeing how uh, Blaise Kampaul has been. Uh, in power since uh, the death of Thomas Sankara, if uh, the the student body, uh, members of the labor movement, uh, I mean workers parties and uh, other groups, are they really agitating for a change? And uh, does it mean that uh, Burkina Faso uh, don't want to effect a change? Um, I will tell you yes. I'm one of the people who were so agitated for changes back home for Thomas Sankara killing, being one of the pioneers of uh, the revolution, growing up in the revolution. And personally, I still remember the day of his killing, which I nearly lost my own life, and many people as well. And I will tell you through that student movement, unions uh, movement leaders, human rights leaders have been you know, been beaten, locked up because of this agitation. And I will say it, you must have been aware that we had a famous, a powerful independent journalist who was killed on the 13th of um, December 1998. Uh, well, in, uh, in, in the Burkina Faso, because Obedo. of his, his investigation yeah. of Thomas Sankara killing, but also other workers that was killed by his uh, brother, and that came to a light that he, his brother organized uh, that journalist murder, and he was killed and burned uh, that with, with, with his, his friends. That's horrible. Do you, all uh, fingers have been pointing towards uh, Blaise Campaolo uh, as uh, the killer of uh, Thomas Sankara, and nobody has done anything. Uh, will you uh, be surprised as uh, to the regards he's still uh, in power, whereas uh, the international community or the big powers are policing some uh, African leaders towards uh, going to the ICC when moderates like Blaise Campaul are still in power? Um, I will tell you that I'm not surprised. Why? Because I've been watching the international community uh, politics behind um, Thomas Sankara killing and especially they support to uh, uh, bless himself at, at, at this stage, especially the French. And I will, I will point a, one of the EU report recently, a few weeks ago, who was praising him for being like a good example, because he's playing the role of the international community, especially the French, which are behind Thomas Sankara killing. You can't watch it and anyone can refer to um, July, the, uh, the African Union summit in July 1989, when Thomas Sankara spoke on 
openly about you know international debt and the African debt and calling for you know uh, African Union for um, uh, countries for, for local trading and so on and the uh, call for the African state to have like a, their own G8 or G20 whatsoever in Africa and deal with their own problem than expecting um, everything to come from the West. And then he said briefly, he could even get support from the African leaders. Yeah. The next summit, he wouldn't be there because they would be killed one by one, which he meant himself. And if you look at it, 29 of July, 1989, and uh, uh, 1987, and 15 of October, 1987, his killing, it's exactly two months, two weeks. So it's clearly that I'm not surprised what is mm -hmm. happening. But what I will say is that it's so sad that most of these issues, the international community watches it silently and tell it when people are losing their life or the country is burning down, they now make a noise and pretending to be those who are going to protect civilians. Where they should pull or they should have taken steps yeah. forward to you know, stop this happening. Okay. okay. In the in the presence of all these uh, issues in Burkina Faso, dictatorial tendencies of uh, Blaise Kampara and his uh, elongation of the elongation of his tenure, what is the way forward in Burkina Faso? Um, the way forward is difficult to predict, difficult to say. I will tell you that Blaise is one of the clever and intelligent presidents I have seen, ever seen. I was uh, so involved in politics for over 20 years before I ended up out of my country for, 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 for political reasons. And I know the way he played the games, it will be difficult to predict. And the only thing that I can say is once the international community will be, you know, honest with themselves and look at forward in terms of human rights issues and in terms of, you know, good governance and democracy. Uh, level and said, look, enough is enough. It can't die in power. It can't stay there forever. And ask him to stop violating human rights and abusing people. The killing is too much silently. Many opposants are locked up if they speak out. The corruption is too much if you start organizing something. And then what is, you know, won't be surprising is People are disappearing when you don't even have any information where they are, what happened to them. Because of that, it's difficult. Student movement, unions, human rights movements are, you know, shaking the country right now. But this has been there for since he is in power. I can refer to you um, in 19, uh, 1991, when some of our opposition leader who was even a member of this yeah. front group, popular um, when he killed Thomas Sankara resigned because they realized that all of what he said at, at the time was completely untruth. But how many of them were killed? You know, have been you know beaten to you know level that they are disabled for life right now. It's difficult to predict. Okay, uh, thank you for this uh, segment. Um, uh, our honorable viewers uh, stay tuned uh, for this talk with uh, Lassan uh, Wedrego uh, is from Burkina Faso, speaking on uh, Burkina Faso, uh, racism in Ireland, and other issues. Stay tuned for the second part of it. We'll be right back. Thank you. Thank you.